Greetings, this is Daniel Kramer for Trailers from Hell, and of course I'm in front of the Eiffel Tower. Many movies have been shot in and around and by the Eiffel Tower. Of course, there's also one movie within a movie, The Girl Who Stole the Eiffel Tower. This film you're writing, does it have a title yet? Of course. The Girl Who Stole the Eiffel Tower. The Girl Who Stole the Eiffel Tower. The trumpets segue into the inevitable title song. Maybe we can get Sinatra to sing it. The girl who stole the Eiffel Tower also stole my heart. Starring Tony Curtis as himself, playing a character in this movie within the movie. I see him as curiously unattractive. Not at all. Philippe happens to be very handsome. In fact, he looks rather like uh, Tony Curtis. I see him as one of those mumbling, scratching actors destined only for minor roles and character parts. And the movie that contains it is Paris When It Sizzles, starring Audrey Hepburn and William Holt. Are you confused? Don't worry. I will explain everything in the trailer commentary. This has always been known as one of Audrey Hepburn's lesser vehicles. Even Hepburn herself didn't care much for it, though she did call it a joy to make. And though it has perhaps a shaky reputation in most circles, eh, you know, shoot me, I've always liked it. In fact, I'd often catch it on the old AMC as a kid and happily sat through it not just once, but a number of times. It grabbed me because it struck me then as a pretty innovative Brechtian look at both the writing and movie making processes. I guess I was also a sucker for movies about the movie business back then especially one that seemed ahead of its time when it came to the idea of meta and meta-narrative. You might call this one teaspoon Pirandello and a tablespoon of Blake Edwards. Although director Richard Quine, who happened to be Blake Edwards' mentor, wrapped Paris when it sizzles in 1962, just two days before Hepburn started work on Stanley Don and Charade, this one sat on the shelf and was released two years later, after Charade scored both critical and commercial success. When William Holden references My Fair Lady, Hepburn had yet to star in the film version of the musical, which would premiere later in 1964. The most surprising aspect of the picture are the cameo appearances. We've got Marlena Dietrich, the aforementioned Tony Curtis, Mr. Audrey Hepburn, Mel Ferrer, and the voice of Frank Sinatra, as you heard during the opening. Not to mention we've also got Noel Coward as the impetuous studio executive. I should also mention that Paris when it sizzles, is more or less a remake of Julien de Vivier's comedy Holiday for Henrietta from 1952. That film followed two partner screenwriter characters who bicker while counteractively plotting their new project as we see the conflicting scenarios play out. The setup here is similar. A young stenographer is hired to assist a hard-drinking screenwriter whose script is due in just two days. The obstacle is that he hasn't written a single page. All he's got is a title. So together, they work out the story and the dialogue for the girl who stole the Eiffel Tower, crossing genres and tones, and entertaining any number of exhaustion-fueled absurdities. I think it's a lot of fun, and through the years I've met others who feel similarly. The screenwriter and producer here is George Axelrod, who also gave us scripts for Breakfast at Tiffany's, The Manchurian Candidate, The Seven Year Itch, Will Success Spoil Rock Hunter, I Could Go On. William Holden's character Richard Benson would be pleased. We've also got a lovely, wistful, sentimental, featherlight score by Nelson Riddle. As usual, don't listen to the naysayers. Make up your own mind.